Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video. I wanted to show you my very first bullet journal and I got it from Notebook Therapy. This is the box that it came in. It's so cute. They actually have this design in a notebook as well if you like it. Um, but I got their um, collaboration design um, with Milk to Art. So this is like the Halloween magical um, design. It's so cute and every notebook therapy bullet journal comes with a customized paper clip. So this is the witch's hat for this notebook. How cute is it? But I wanted to show you the back of the notebook first. So this is a collaboration again with Milk to Art and Notebook Therapy. It comes with like this flap in the back. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in there yet. And then it always comes with a quote. And that is the quote for this notebook. And so the very first or the very last page, I suppose, I'm using as a grid cheat sheet and also my key. I know most people put this in the front of the book, but I decided I'm going to put mine in the back. It's still on the left side, so it'll be all right. Um, yeah, so I made my own key. I don't know about the whole bullet journal key, so I just made my own. Um, this isn't going to be like the bullet journals that you see on YouTube because I'm not that kind of artist. I can't draw very well, so most of my um, spreads are going to be basic, but hopefully still colorful. So this is just my cheat sheet, grid sheet. Um, and also this notebook is a size B5. Um, it's the biggest size they have and it has 176 pages. It lays flat and it's dotted. So anyways, let's go ahead and get on with the rest of the video. It's going to be a voiceover um, and you can see how I created my first few spreads. I hope you enjoy it. I decided I wanted a quote page for the very first page of my bullet journal. So I wrote my own version of this common quote. You don't need a new year to start something new. You can start right now. For the decoration of this page, I was thinking initially of a B, um, but then I decided to go with a paper plane instead to signify the new journey that I'm going to be going into by starting a bullet journal. The quote came from the idea that I don't have to wait until January to start a bullet journal. So I'm very excited to be doing this now. And I chose the color purple since it is my favorite color. I wanted this to be something that I would enjoy looking at every time I open my journal. So I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I even had to Google how to draw that paper plane. And it was honestly very satisfying to see the finished product. The next page is the future log. I actually did not understand the purpose of a future log for quite a while. And then finally, I was like, oh, okay, so you use it for um, events or tasks that would be for future months that is not the month that you're working on at the moment. I decided to do nine months since I know I probably won't be able to do a full year in this journal. For the design, I was somewhat attracted to the idea of dashes. So I decided instead of a regular solid frame that I would do dashed frames. I will do my best to link the markers that I have used in this video in the description box. So check that out if you are interested. The next page is my weekly spread and I apologize in advance. I did not realize that my camera had trouble focusing, but basically I decided to highlight the week that I am currently making the spread for in the calendar. As for the spread itself, I decided to follow Amanda Rachley's tip on drawing straight lines. Her tip is to make sure that you're dragging the pen towards your body so that you're able to create a straight line. I also decided to add some drop shadows and some washi tapes to make it look like the boxes are post-it notes. Fun fact, I actually have been 
testing different spreads um, prior to buying this notebook and originally I wanted to maximize each page by putting one whole week in one page but then I didn't think that it was aesthetically pleasing to have so much information in one page so I decided to just go ahead and do a two page spread so as you can see here I decided to be creative and use colored pencil to color in the drop shadows this is the closest shade to the marker that I was using and I really like how it turned out I'm happy to know that the drop shadows are actually worth all the hype. I decided to put the weekends on the other page because I actually needed a lot more space when I'm not working for to-do list or task and also the reason why the boxes are so big for my weekly spread is because I wanted to also do like a little bit of journaling or reflection of the day. Just like when I was doing long form journaling when I would just write out everything that was in my mind at the end of the day. For the other half of the page, I wanted to put my gratitudes and habit tracker. I am doing a weekly habit tracker because I wanted the flexibility to add more things or remove some things and add newer ones um, every single week because there's times when I would change it up a little bit and a monthly tracker doesn't allow me to do that. So I've been doing weekly trackers even when I was still doing long form journaling. For my gratitudes, I wanted enough space to be able to write three to four things I'm grateful for for each day of the week. I truly believe that being grateful for every single day makes life so much better. And as for the design of this section, I wanted to do a little bit of a glow effect on the letters. And here is the final flip through of all the spreads that I have created. It was so satisfying filming this part of the video because I was really proud of how each page turned out. For the November cover page, I decided to do a scrapbook style and also use Amanda Rachley's washi tapes. I never thought I would be bullet journaling, but here I am. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye!